It's Anthropology Late at Night. With your host, Johnny Stewart. Tonight on the show, Anthropology Professor, Dr. Diana Rivers. Dr. Rivers, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. It's great to be here. Dr. Rivers, I wanted to talk to you about archaeology and paleoanthropology. Okay, John, we can talk about that. You know, sometimes we hear on the news that a new discovery has been found, like for instance, the Hobbit. And they tell us it's 14,000 years old. Then we hear about Australopithecus garrahi, and they tell us that this find is 2 million years old. How do we know this? Well, John, there are several different dating methods that anthropologists can use to find out how old something is. Really? What methods were used to find out how old the Hobbit is? Because the Hobbit was less than 40,000 years old, and because there are also organic materials that could be dated in the site, uh, archaeologists used radiocarbon dating to get a date for the Hobbit. Radiocarbon dating? What's that? First, John, I need to talk to you about different types of dating methods. There's, there's two main types of methods. One is relative dating, and this is where we can't get an absolute date on site, so we get a relative date. That means that we know that the site or the artifact or the human remains are younger than something but older than something else. So it might be younger than this ash fall, uh, but it's older than that, that ash fall or something like that. So that would be a relative date. Now, an absolute date is a more precise date. We can say that something is so many thousand years old or so many hundred years old, uh, plus or minus so many years. So it's not an absolute date in the sense that we know it was 12 noon on Wednesday, but it's absolute in the sense that we can narrow it down to within a few years. So you're saying that radiocarbon dating is an absolute dating method? Yes, John. The way radiocarbon works, and I'll be brief because I don't want to put you to sleep, uh, is that every living thing on the planet right now is absorbing radioactive carbon, carbon-14, from the atmosphere and from the environment. Now this is a normal thing and it doesn't hurt you and it doesn't make you glow in the dark or anything. But carbon-14 is an unstable radioactive isotope of normal carbon. And as everybody is absorbing it, all the plants and all the animals, they continue to absorb it and it stays in their body uh, until they die. Now, once they die, then you stop absorbing the radioactive carbon-14, and that starts to break down into nitrogen-14. So it takes 5,730 years for half of the carbon-14 to change to nitrogen. This is the half-life of carbon-14. Now, another after another 5,730 years, only a quarter of the original carbon-14 will remain, and so on. And that's one of the reasons why carbon-14 dating is only good up to about 40,000 years. Anything older than 40,000 years, it's not really dependable for that. Scientists can tell how old something is by measuring how much carbon-14 is left in a sample? Exactly, John. You've got it right. What methods can be used for the older things? things older than 40,000 years. Well, another radiometric dating technique that can be used for stuff that's older is called potassium argon. Potassium-40 is a radioactive isotope of potassium that breaks down into argon-40, which is a gas. Now, the half-life of potassium-40 is far longer than that of radioactive carbon, 1.3 billion years. With this method, the older the specimen, the more reliable the dating. And furthermore, whereas carbon-14 dating can only be done on organic remains, potassium argon dating can be used only for inorganic substances, rocks and minerals. K-40 in rocks gradually breaks down into argon-40, and that gas is trapped in the rock until the rock is heated intensely. This is like in a volcano or something, and uh, at that point it may escape. So when the rock cools then, the breakdown of potassium into argon resumes. So basically heating it up in a volcano resets the clock. And so they can do the dating on that one by reheating the rock and measuring how much gas escapes. Based on escaping gas, I'm probably two million years old after free hot dog day at Turner Field. You're such a ham, Timmy. <laughs> Seriously, though. Those hot dogs. That's enough out of you. Now, 
Dr. Rivers, are there other absolute methods? Yes, John. Um, we have a particular kind of absolute dating method. It's called dendro chronology. And that's a big $50 word that basically means tree ring dating. Now, you know how trees grow. They lay down a new ring every year. And you will see if you look at tree rings that some of them are wider and some of them are narrower. And this is because trees lay down a wider ring in good years and a narrower ring in leaner years. So the life of the tree is written in its tree rings. And so this uh, leaves a pattern in trees of a particular region who are experiencing different climate conditions and environmental conditions. And so going all the way back in history of that area, as long as you pick trees from the same area, Area, you can count the tree rings going back and uh, you could go back as far as you can on one tree and then match up tree rings to another tree uh, and go back farther on that one. Can you use dendrochronology anywhere? We know that wood is not well preserved everywhere. This is particularly good in dry areas because in these areas the wood is preserved and uh, the, the rings can be matched up uh, one against the other. And so tree ring dating has uh, gone back as far as about 11,000 years and it's very accurate. Trees always have to come from the same region so that they're exposed to the same environmental patterns and then those tree ring sequences can be made up. So places like the southwestern United States is a good place to get tree ring dating uh, and also in really dry desert areas areas like Shatal Huyuk in Turkey uh, have used dendrochronology to establish a 700-year dating sequence. Where are the trees coming from that you are getting dates from? Are they growing on the site? I'm glad you asked that, John. Actually, where we get the wood from is people use wood as building materials. So we can date something that was used to hold up a roof or date some piece of wood that was used in building construction in some way. And that gives us a pretty good idea of when the tree was cut down to build the building. Now, where we run into some trouble with this is if someone goes and reclaims wood from an old building, you might get a, a funky date. But uh, in general terms, uh, you could usually uh, cross check things and, uh, and figure out what the date was that the tree was cut down that was used in building that, that structure. These are absolute dating methods. You mentioned relative dating methods. What are they? That's when you date your cousin or something, isn't it? Pluto, get your mind back in the game, please. Sorry, Professor. Okay, John, I'll, I'll explain it to you this way. In relative dating, we get a chronology, and that means a time sequence based on relative age. So whether something is older than something or younger than something, uh, or between two dates. So sometimes we'll have an archaeological site where we can't get an absolute date on the site itself. But we can date something underneath it, and we can date something above it. So then we can say that that archaeological site is older than the thing above it, but younger than the thing below it. Okay, now it's hard to explain this without drawing it, but think of it in terms of a layer cake. Now when you're putting together a layer cake, the bottom layer has to go on first, right? And then you're going to put other layers on top of it. In an archaeological site, those are called strata. Those layers are called strata. And so according to the law of superposition, the lower strata in an undisturbed archaeological site, undisturbed means it hasn't been dug up, oldest layers will be at the bottom, and the most recent layers will be at the top. And so we can tell, if we can get a date from something in a lower stratum, a lower level of the layer cake, and then we can get a date from something above the site in the layer cake, then we could say that this site is between this many years old and that many years old. So in other words, we could say that it's younger than this date, but it's older than that date. That's really interesting. I never knew about relative and absolute dating, radiocarbon and potassium argon dating, and dendrochronology. Thank you so much for coming on the show and explaining it. You're welcome, John. It was my pleasure. That's our show. Join us next time when we talk about another fascinating anthropology topic. <laughs>